And I've just been called out to this job. The heating's been staying on all weekend. It looks like a new boiler and it looks like a new three pot on the system. I'll spin the camera around and show you. So the program is, program is off. The, but obviously the pump's still running and the radiators, well the ones downstairs seem to be getting hot. That is flow from the boiler into the three pot. It looks like it's had a new three pot. It's a drayton, I think. Oh, they've like melted with the head, look. What the hell? They've cut the head off, look, to get the head in, which is not, not perfect. So the head's all been cut, so I've not put my fingers in there. So that one will be hot water on the B port and an A port to the radiators. But like, that shoots up. So it's a bit weird the way, the way they've done that. So... Yeah, so that's that's feed up from the boy that's feed up from the boiler into the cold feed and vent, so that's vent and cold feed down and they're using that as a bypass and then that one's feeding the radiators. Then pipe that pipe there is hot. Is that valve? I mean it might be the valve that's that's gone. Everything seems to be on, so normally three port valve, so we'll have a look at that. So I've managed to wiggle that head off. Obviously somebody's decided to cut the lid because it was hitting on the, on the feed coming up. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna ice, my mate's just gone to isolate the power downstairs on the spare. And we'll do safe isolation and we'll whip the orange out and see if it is still cooling. So he's turned, turned the main spear off, the pump's gone off and we'll have a look and see what's going on. Right, so this valve appears to be playing up. I'm not very happy with it anyway because it's been, it's been butchered. I'm hoping if I put a honeywell on, the head's slightly smaller. So, so I'm gonna. My mate's just popped up in the roof to bung the head of tank off, and we'll just carefully. I can't even get that back off again. We'll just carefully, probably shut the pump valves off, stop it feeding back, and then we should just be able to crack that with a bag underneath it and put put the honeywell in. That's my plan anyway. So I'm just going to turn this bottom gate valve off on the pump. Obviously we've isolated the power, isolated the electrics and everything. And we've bung the header tank. So we'll turn that off. And then hopefully that doesn't snap. Make sure that bypass is fully shut. And then I should be able to crack it. I've got my bag set up. So I'll try and get the camera positioned and we'll get that sorted. What I'll do is just carefully open that bleed valve just to get rid of the pressure. Do you want to just grab some blue roll out the van, Jacob? Oh, there's some blue roll there. Just stick some blue roll down there. Once it's got rid of the pressure, I'll shut that back off to make the vacuum and then we should be good to go. So we'll have to change the nuts and olives on these as well because it's a drain in for Honeywell and they don't fit. The threads are different on the Honeywell. But the actual bar, the actual dimensions are the same. And what I'm hoping, hey, I don't get too much water. And be the nuts and olives come off all right. All right, tight, which is good then.
We got Maybe that won't breathe in too much. Yes, please, mate. If you could, no, the hose is hung off. If you just grab the wet back, that'd be ideal. Jake, who's just gone to grab, grab the wet back, just because I can't get the bucket positioned very well. I don't think we'll get a lot more. We are going to drop. It's because the flow pipe goes up for the heating. There must be an air tap in the roof. <laughs> Probably silk the vacuum out of it now, won't I? Yeah. Should be alright. How much are we going to get? Because that 22 pipe drops all. There's not an automatic air vent. There's not an automatic air vent up there, is there, Jacob? In the roof. Where does that pipe go? Go straight up. It seems to have stopped anyway. Normally you can get these off with 22. What's wrong, Jacob? No, I don't know where it goes. It might go into the wall. Don't, don't worry too much about it, mate. It stopped anyway. Or virtually stopped. Turn that wet back in a second for us, please, mate. I don't know why that's breathing in so much. No. There must be an air valve up in the roof somewhere. So A, A for heating. What I'm going to do, a bit naughty, but I'm going to pre-jet blue that up before I push it on. Just because the valve. Just because it's all breathing in it. I don't want to make a mess. Try and get that nut off there. Just pre jet blew all them up, Jacob, for us, please, mate. The nuts and all those should be down here. Should be one more nut somewhere. They're not already. Yeah, no, I don't, don't know, that's the old one. Has he got all three? Oh, well, yeah. It's an old one. You need that third one, mate. Where have it gone? It's there. 
Yeah, normally 22 pipe where you can get the old little polish off. A's for water. No, A's for heating, mate. For heating. Yeah. B, B for bath. And so they've left that on just because it's longer than half. Right, it's docked anyway, so. They are all, they are all jet blued up, ready to go. So B for hot water. Okay, let's just whip them up and make it easier now. Don't drop the olive. Pop us a bit more jet blue, please, Jacob. A for A for heating. And A B in. So it's that stressful moment when you just get a little bit more water than you than you think you're gonna get. All this is is just jet blue joining compound. So make sure we get the valve the right way. Try not to wiggle any of the connections too much. And then that should be good. Just turn that up. Hoping you can still get that head off. That'll be a lot easier to see. It off. should be. Right, you can uh, go on and bung it, Jacob, if you want. That honeywell had been a bit smaller than the drain, and it should come up as well. And I just need to do my functionality checks on this system. We just turn the heating on, pumps come up. Mine makes about to turn the stat down. It might have an overrun on it to be fair. Let's see if this valve shuts. It's a bit hard to tell with three ports. I think that valve is closing. It'll probably take a second for the pump to go off on the overrun. Just pop the hot water on for me, please, Jacob. On the programmer, and then we'll wait for him to pop that on, and then we can turn the cylinder start up. See if the valve. Probably have to get the air out. I think it's working. You can hear it coming through. The valve is opening. Probably a bit of air in it. Yeah, the pump's running, mate. There's probably a load of air in it now. Just, just, just turn them both off, and we'll make sure the pump goes off in a second. So turn, turn both off on the programmer, and then we'll bleed the air out of it. Right, I'm just getting all the air out of it. That heating flow pipe, I think, goes up into the roof, but I've just let it go. Just on heat, and I've turned the hot water off on the cylinder start, just to blast it up, and you can hear all the air gurgling the radiators. We didn't lose that much anyway. Uh, so the hot water's off. I know they've piped it in on the return. You know, ideally, it would have been better off to come in on the top of the coil, but we can only work with what we've got. We're not, you know, where do you stop on a job sometimes? So you can hear all the air in the pump. To, sometimes you can like, almost stop the pump just to help shift the air. You hear it all gurgle. You can like, unplug these as well if you are struggling with an airlock. Hopefully, we should be good. We just need to make sure the pipe's gone cold again. It did get really hot. Um, you just need to make sure everything is working, make sure it is all turning off. You can hear the pump grinding a bit, and it's just there. 
and then we should be good to go on this one. I'm just checking the radiators. A lot of them don't seem to be working very well. It's microball, so it can block up. So we'll have a look. Just check to make sure they're fully on. Which I think that one is. Check the pin. You might be stuck a little bit. Oh no, it's actually free. I'll just check for air, but I don't think it'll be air. One or more of these parts will be locked. Just make sure they're off. That's why you well ain't working. It's got a bit, but that's not enough. I'll show you an easy way. Speed fit, pressure tester thing. Not annoying. Really. Let me do it. 
Ich komm. Ich komm. Den haben wir auch bei Kopf. See if we get that this time. Splash. Check the pressure. A little bit more pumping. I'll wash it out best I can. I don't want to go too mad. That should work. Hopefully the other side's not blocked as well. See the colour of my water. It's all got bits in it as well. So that pipe was blocked. God knows where. So I know it's not best pushing it back. But sometimes you can only do what you can do. Right, you'll have to trust me on that one, but that, that end we have got decent flow, I don't want to open it again. But all you do is crack it into your tray. I'll reject blue that on, and that radiator should work. There's two or three others in the house that aren't working, so it'll be the same on them all. It's just the micro ball gets blocked somewhere under the floor. I know it's not best to push it back, but what else can you do? Right, I've just turned the boiler back on. 
You have to take my word for it, but that is coming through hot straight away. That, I think that ends the flow. And that ends the return. Return's still a bit cold, but it is working its way through. Just got two or three others to sort. And we should be good. Oh, we've got no leaks. Check all the pack ins and stuff. Other than that, should be good to go. I've just come to site, uh, it's first thing Monday morning. Uh, I've not actually been to this one before. We've got no heat in. First thing I notice, there's no pressure in it. Whether that's caused the problem, it's basically just trying to establish what everything is. We've got an ideal Evo Max in the corner. And what's it saying? It's coming up with fault. Um, we'll have a look at what that fault is. I think on these you can should be able to see all the fault goes up. I can't remember how to do it. But yeah, uh, obviously we've got fault on the boiler. It's, looks like it's been boosted. So we'll have a look, see what's going on. So it's coming up, it's flashing a bit on the thing, but we have got a low water pressure fault on the boiler. So what we'll do is we're gonna check this expansion vessel. It actually feels hollow. It might be that it's just the start of the heating season and and it's fine. Obviously it's a commercial site. Where's the fuel loop? It shouldn't really, it shouldn't really have a fuel loop on it. It should either have a microfill on it or RPZ, but that is what it is. So we've topped that up to just over one bar and the boiler's actually stuck back up now. But as I say, we're gonna check the expansion vessel and we're gonna check, check the PRV as well, wherever that goes and hopefully that might be an easy one sorted. The PRV actually just drops on the floor, so I'm pretty sure that hasn't been discharging. But I'm still gonna check this, check this vessel. It's actually, it'd have been better if it had been a red one. I think that is probably, well it is a silver one, it probably is suitable for heating. But I guess what's happened is, could even be a little leak on the system somewhere. Yeah, no, it's hard to tell on these big buildings. So ideally, it should have had a microfill on it. Obviously, that's the original pipe work. I don't know. We just have to sort of do what you can do and see if you can see anything leaking. But yeah, there's not there's not a great deal more you can do. So all these pipe works are actually in ducts underneath. This is the bit leaving from the boiler room. And often what you find is these old pipes can can leak. I mean. What we're going to have to do on this one is just top that vessel up. I don't think the vessel's the issue really, to be honest with you, because it sounds hollow. And the PRVs, either of the PRVs haven't discharged. But it can be that there's a leak on, under here. I mean, it might be one that site just have to keep their eye on. And monitor to see if the pressure does drop. But it could just be the fact that it's to start the heating system. I do get a lot of these easy jobs or what what can be easy jobs but turn out to be a nightmare but yeah all the ducts that would have been the old high level ventilation going out the ceiling for the old boiler and obviously the low level ventilation in the boiler room door but obviously that evo max won't need it and that would have been the old flue hole up there but yeah right i'll just check this expansion vessel while we're here there doesn't sound to be any air the boiler's been running a couple of minutes and generally if you've got a leak you hear like loads of air trickling through what i always do is put a little bit of silicon grease onto the nipple before before i connect my pump on it just helps lubricate everything up and it generally stops the shader valves from leaking by obviously we can check that with a little bit of ldf at the end just a little bit of grease and it lubricates the o-ring inside i'm fairly happy with this one Everything seems to be working now inside the building. What I'll probably do is obviously just pop my ticket while I'm done. Ideally a system like this would normally have a top up and it stops issues like this, an automatic microfill. I had fitted them in before, I think I've done some on the channel. Um, it just basically, the pressure drops a little bit during the summer, which it often does on big systems. You get a bit of evaporation, uh, expansion and contraction. You often get little weeps on radiator valves and stuff, which are pretty much impossible to find without massive searching. You, you, you do, you just lose a bit of water. So obviously a microfill would, would keep it topped up and then you saves this call out. But so we, it's an easy job, but we do get a lot of these sort of fed this time of the year. 